Hi, welcome back to another lecture about methods in experimental ecology. This time we're going to be talking about how to handle data in R. As I'm trying to imply with my evolutionary arrow here, pretty cheesily drawn graphic I know, there's a whole range of ways to manipulate data. Some of them are fairly simple, some of them not very high on our evolutionary spectrum here, and some of them quite advanced. For example, the handle on the Buzz Lightyear mug there, which I really need to get one. Anyway, uh, there are also some odd ways to handle data where you're going to try to steer you away from that would mean, mean that you're leading into fairly convoluted handles or um, perhaps maybe some uh, bizarre ways to open the doors into understanding. So let's think about an, a series of ways to deal with data. So what I want to get to here today is to think about ways you can change data. There's a fundamental paradigm which is nicely summarized by one of the leaders in our programming, a guy by the name of Hadley Wickham. He wrote a paper that nicely wrapped it together in terms of split, apply, and combine. The basic paradigm of managing data is that you need to take a great big data set, for example, and divide it into subsets to work on. Another one might be to make some sort of calculations to transform variables or calculate means, for example, of different sets, perhaps some little split subset you, subsets that you organize and then combining data to put data sets together, um, maybe two different data sets you want to align for a, a, a reference point that is coincident in both data sets. So for example, sites. You might have data that you collected in a site that was related to the species that you observed there, and maybe another data set you collected that was related to the physical chemical conditions. But the common link between those two data sets would be the sites and perhaps the dates. So to combine those data sets, so that they all match up would be another big trick. Now you could do all that stuff in spreadsheets, which is the way a lot of us have grown up doing this. Of course, that gets really clumsy when you need to deal with great big data sets, and you can spend days and days manually manipulating things in spreadsheets and cross your fingers that you didn't make errors. You uh, could find yourself having to redo it. Now, if you're dealing with big data sets especially, it's that much more obvious that the time to learn something is going to be um, a fairly substantial chunk of time, but probably worth it when you deal with lots of data sets that are really big. And so I think as we get used to the idea that we're progressively using bigger and bigger data sets, it makes more sense that we should be thinking about these more automated approaches to that because it A, reduces the amount of uh, redundancy and time and effort that you're putting into things, chances of errors that you might be applying into the data um, by your own mistakes of moving things around in a spreadsheet, for example. Um, and also, there's a learning curve with this. Let's say it takes you a couple hours to learn a command. You can spend easily hours and days doing that work by hand. So there's a lot of reasons to try to figure these kinds of commands out in R. And what I have listed here are a couple of the major sets that have existed, do exist still. Um, I'd say the apply commands, to my knowledge, came along earlier, followed by a set of commands based on a library of, of logical statements and you'll see in a second called plier. And then the one that I'm emphasizing here in larger print is the dplyr package because it applies to data frames, which I use most often. And therefore, in my worldview, I just expect everybody else would do the same. And I think it's gonna be fair to say you're probably gonna be playing around with data frames as well. But let me walk through those briefly and we'll see to make some sense of this. Okay, so I'm going to assume, by the way, that all the data that we're talking about and all this work are correct and that you have proofread the data. That's an important assumption to make. Garbage in, garbage out, as they say. If you're not carefully making sure that the data were thereafter manipulating, rearranging, calculating, splitting, combining, all that kind of stuff, are going to be uh, true, then all of this is sort of a waste of time. So a preliminary step that's absolutely essential, but we're not going to belabor here, is that you have verified that the data now to be managed are correct, okay? So the fundamental paradigm here that we're going to be working with is this split, apply, combine set of commands. We're going to be talking about different ways to split, apply, and combine data. So let's talk about splitting first. It's pretty simple, as you might imagine. If you had a couple of spreadsheets, you might think about ways to manage data in a spreadsheet that would be, for example, filters or uh, sorts, and then a um, cut and paste or copy paste kind of mode. So if I had um, data sets that might look like this, 
I could be wanting just to get the A data, right? So let's say ultimately I want to get the A10 when I first counted something and the A4 when I secondly counted something. And I want to ultimately put those together and, you know, of course, come up with a total of maybe 14. But what I want to do is just get the A data, okay? Oops, actually, that should be a 10 and a 14. Ha, ah, look at that. Okay, there, I fixed it. So if we had um, just the A data, I want to split those out, only the A's. There, we would have that kind of thing. Um, it might be that I want to be more fancy than that, but th you get the idea. We're going to be just taking out a subset of the data. There's ways to do that in spreadsheets, as I'm alluding to. Filters are very convenient when you want to just work on a subset, but um, retain everything. This is actually removing and setting aside a data set that contains just the A data, all right? And you can call that a split, if you will, or a select. And then you can name a new object, like my A data or something, to represent that separate piece of data. Okay, so splitting is taking out a chunk, right? That's sort of obvious. What about applying? Applying is more general. We're talking about transforming variables. Uh, maybe, for example, calculating a mean. Here's my 10 and my 4. 10 and 4, yep, okay, divided by 2, I got a mean of 7, okay? So those, that's a simple transformation, a calculation. We're talking about algebra, we're talking about statistics like means, standard deviations, etc. Um, it could be things that you're sorting out. It could be that you're rearranging things and then recalculating stuff. Let's say I had multiple kinds of A's. Maybe I'd have A1s, A2s, and I want to just keep those. So we're talking about managing data, but especially related to calculations on it. It could be log transforms, etc. Okay? So applying changes is fairly broad. Splitting is fairly specific to select or remove out certain types of data. And the obvious converse of splitting would be combining data, right? We're going to put things back together again. We're going to combine them. We're going to merge them somehow. And that can also, notice, include some sort of algebra in the process. So we're talking about sorting things out, copying and pasting, deleting out pieces, doing some algebra, and putting them all together in a new form, okay? So let's say I have the A's, 10 and 4, and I want to come up with a total 14. I have combined all these things together, I've taken this set of data here, the first counts, and combined it with the second counts into a sum. So the way you combine data may simply be a recalculation, but I'm putting them together into a new data set, okay? So all of these kinds of approaches to splitting, applying, and combining data can be handled in a series of commands that originated in R, to my knowledge, with the apply family. Then this split, apply, combine, combine kind of framework can be handled in this set of commands. There's an apply, as we just talked about, um, your managing these different kinds of calculations in some sort of operation. And then certain subsets of that, or I should say, maybe should say derivatives, the saply, laply, taply, are working on those same kinds of commands you use in a general apply, but they work on a list or a vector, or only gives you back a list, or only gives you back a matrix or an array. So notice that those don't mention data frames here, which is the form of data in which I use most often. Now the other thing is that I, I'm my own experience in trying to figure these commands out and others that I've read online say this is not an easy thing for a beginner to work with and I've struggled with it myself. So I've quickly looked for other approaches to this beyond apply, which people use all the time, advanced R users, and um, found that there's another package of, uh, called plier by a um, wizard named Hadley Wickham. And so this also does that split apply combine work, the same as the apply family. But people tell me, at least online, that it's faster in its algorithm. It's based on C++, and so it's efficient in the code. And very nicely, for my purposes, more of a beginning user of R, is that it has a nice grammar, where are there are um, rather intuitive verbs that you're using. And it's a, a fairly constrained set of verbs, so it's fairly obvious. Out of the list that's available to me, Yes, that's the verb I want to use. I want to do something like that verb. So it's a little easier to pick up, I think. It's a little bit easier to explain to somebody what you're about to do with the data as well. Okay? I think it's very convenient for an R end user like ourselves. Okay, so in my view, I think this is becoming a default for this split apply combine work in R. And there is a derivative, I guess you'd say, or a new version of plier that is called dplyr. And it's made for working on data frames. As I said, that's what I see myself using most often. I think um, 
you might do the same. If you were working on just um, vectors or lists, you could certainly use some of the apply commands. But I think dplyr can work on those as well, as long as your data frame is restricted to just a subset, like um, a vector. OK, so let's think about these verbs. And this is just a part of those verbs. These are the main ones. There's several others that you can work with. There's a verb called filter. And that's going to do much what you might expect a um, filter in Excel to do, where you just want to keep a subset of the rows in a data frame. So if I go back to one of my data sets before I was showing you my fake ones with the gray boxes, I might be looking for just my rows that contained A. Okay, And so that would be a, a nice way to do that. A range is basically to reorder the rows. That would be comparable to a sort in an X spreadsheet of some kind. But notice that this is somewhat flexible. It can be sorted in a few different ways. But it's very much comparable to what you expect for a sort command in a spreadsheet. And select just like it sounds. You're keeping a subset. You're pulling out a part of the data. Like I want to keep just the A's in my data set. Okay. Mutate is also sort of, um, I think, generally approachable. I'm going to change the data. I'm going to shift it. It's going to become something new. And so let's say if I want to add two different columns together and get a sum, I might mutate to calculate that sum. And you specify the kind of mutation in the command. You can divide, you can multiply, you can do all kinds of basic algebra, right? Uh, log transforms, etc. in the mutate command. And then finally, summarize would be to take a data frame and do a calculation. For example, imagine you want to calculate, calculate the sum of a whole column or all the columns in a data set. Count the number of entries. You can do that very easily with summarize. I noticed that Hadley Wickham uses the British spelling of summarize, whereas us Yanks tend to use a Z. There's an S there, but you get used to doing that pretty quickly. OK, there's other commands, other subset uh, types of commands and selects, et cetera, et cetera, that are verbs in dplyr. But those are the ones that I find myself using most often. And so I thought I'd highlight those for you. Now, this is not intended to be a lesson on how to do dplyr. We're going to spend time at the computers in class learning how to do that hands-on for you. So um, just know that there's some preparation that might be helpful for you in advance. And a few of those kinds of things to read up on might be a general framework here for the split apply combined strategy that Hadley Wickham wrote about in this journal, the statistical software. There's a nice link to it right there. It's freely available. You can understand what split apply combined strategies do in general. And in that paper, he's introducing the plier uh, general approach to that and those verbs that might apply. There's a nice vignette, which is um, a word that is used all the time in R to describe how a package works and its general strategy on R Studio. It's formatted there, it's easy to read, whereas some of the R documentation can be a little clunky to read. And then uh, Kevin Markham has a nice introduction to dplyr, and um, there's also some links in our course website that are related to YouTube videos that he's put together. I think there's two of them that Kevin Markham is written up and explained on using dplyr. So I would highly advise you read some of those extra resources and start thinking about how to use dplyr in your own work when you're going to have data sets that have lots of rows, lots of columns, and you need to be able to manage them and manipulate them in some important ways before you try to get around to doing statistics on them. Like I said, we're going to have some hands-on time to mess around with this in class, and so I will defer that kinds of detail until we get into the classroom. But for now, look at some of these readings and think a little bit more about how to use dplyr, or at least how to um, imagine using dplyr when you get some data. All right, that should do it for now, and we'll see you in class. Bye.